welcome to the first showing of In the Garden. My name is Steve Dubin. I'm the Montgomery County Master Gardener Coordinator. Uh, for, I work for the University of Maryland Extension. Uh, I have two guests with me today, uh, Mary Ellen Barnhart and Taffy Turner, and they're here to help me answer some of your questions, your garden questions. So first, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the University of Maryland um, um, Montgomery County Master Gardener Program. Uh, some of the services that we provide to the residents, the clientele of Montgomery County. Uh, we have a speakers group. Uh, we have several demonstration gardens, one at, at the extension office itself up in Durwood, uh, one over at the, um, at the Montgomery County Fairgrounds, and there's a couple others. We also have a very strong therapeutic horticulture program. We have a youth gardening program. We also have other uh, programs, including uh, ones called uh, one-time events where master gardeners come out to particular events like Earth Day or uh, things like that, and they set up a table and they help to answer gardening questions. And if you have any more questions about these programs and we need more information during the program itself, you'll see a link to our, our website on our email address. Feel free to contact us. Um, the, to let you know, the University of Maryland um, has not, in, not allowed face-to-face -face programs still. So the Montgomery County Extension Office is still closed presently. Um, one of the things I want to mention during this program, if you have any questions, gardening questions, please type them into the comments section. We'll try to answer those questions here today. Uh, we do have a few questions that have come in uh, via email, but first I want to talk to you a little bit about what's really, what's happening in the garden, um, what's hot in the garden right now. Um, as most of you know, it's, we've been having record heat. We're getting close to almost, we probably get close to 30 days above nine degrees. And it's been very taxing uh, for many of our plant materials, particularly plant materials that have been recently installed, maybe plant materials that are not well suited for our area, maybe things that are not native might be having a little more difficult time. And the other thing is we're, we're seeing a lot right now in the middle of summer. Uh, you've seen a lot of uh, different caterpillars. Uh, some caterpillars, uh, like the Catalpa Sphinx, it's a very large caterpillar. I think it might be on your screen. It's, um, it's fairly big. And that's just finishing up its life cycle. Um, that only feeds on Catalpas. It's one generation a year. Well, other caterpillars, like the orange striped oakworm, has two generations a year, and the first generation is just hatching out right now. And that causes a little bit of damage now, more damage later on the year. But by that time, so late in the year, it doesn't pose any significant um, threat to the um, to oaks, but they're out and there's lots of caterpillars out there. So the other thing we're seeing a lot is because of the heat and the humidity, we're seeing a lot more uh, fungal diseases, particularly rust. And there's many different kinds of rust. It's fungus, it's colorful spores, they're kind of orangey brown. Um, many different kinds of plants get that and powdery mildew. Uh, and that is, um, that is also a fungus and that is promoted by high humidity and we're getting a lot of that and you'll see then on a wide variety of plant materials from lilacs, humanimus, uh, peonies, uh, dogwoods, and some of these can actually be very uh, taxing on the plants. They don't directly kill the plant, but they stress it and predispose it to other problematic conditions. So our next uh, thing on our, our program is our, our virtual mailbag. We got a few questions already, and um, I'm gonna let Mary Ellen um, introduce the questions. Okay, thank you, Steve. Yes. Our first question is about dividing and transplanting. The question is, is, is from uh, Elizabeth and Kevin John, and she asks that she says that she has two great stands of iris cristata or draw crested iris and uh, blue eye grass that are getting too bit much shade and she wants to move them. Can she do that in the autumn or should she wait until next spring? And if it, in the spring, when exactly in the spring? Many thanks. Okay, so you can move both those, divide both those plants in the fall, not now, too hot, but in the fall. And um, actually, uh, both of those plants can take a good bit of shade. So if she's moving them because she thinks they're getting too much shade, um, they're not. But you can still move them. And um, blue-eyed grass 
can take a good bit of sun as well. The iris probably morning sun. But um, anyway, fall is a good time to do it. Or spring too. Either one. Okay. Thank you, Taffy. Uh, another question that we got had to do with the um, diseases in trees, and Steve already mentioned that, and there were several related to the diseases. But we also had one about cicada killer, and the fact that we're seeing a lot of uh, cicada killers, and they're not sure if it's cicada killers or uh, um, something else. Could you address that, Steve? Okay, sure. So cicada killers are something we see pretty much every summer. And um, what they do is that they, they, they uh, capture and parasitize the cicada that we typically see every summer. Sometimes we call it the annual cicada. It actually has a two-year life cycle, but since we see them every year, they're around. The periodical cicada which comes out roughly every 17 years, it's going to emerge next year. But the, um, the cicada killer times its life cycle that it emerges or as, a, as an adult when the cicada is out. And it parasitizes that, it makes a tunnel, burrows it down, uh, lays an egg in it. Uh, it, it does sting. Um, it's, it's very, it's like the largest type of wasp, it's actually the type of wasp around here. But it's usually focused on what it needs to do, and that's the capture of cicada, which is pretty big. So uh, it, it does a good job in trying to uh, manage the number of cicadas that we have. Uh, the other thing uh, the cicada killer does is that the, the adults um, feed on um, they feed on pollen and nectar, um, and so th they're they're beneficial in that regard. So they're really beneficial insects. You want to try to leave them alone. They usually make these nests. In the sun, maybe alone. So they're 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 good beneficial insects. Uh, the next question I have um, is from Christopher in Silver Springs. And he says that he has squirrels eating developing apples from my fruit trees. Uh, and he has uh, two four-year-old apple trees that have had prototype proto fruit on the branches in my backyard this July. Last week, squirrels swooped in to strip the trees, this apples from the trees. Apples were wrapped in plastic onion bags in an effort to protect and hide the apples from the squirrels without success. They just ripped the apples from the bags. And I was going to answer that question. And basically, uh, most of the problem with the uh, squirrels deals with gray squirrels, which raid fruit and nut trees, and occasionally a uh, vegetable garden. And they really like our gardens because we have flower bulbs and buds and the trees and leaves may be trimmed from the, they use the tree, twigs and leaves um, to line their nest and, the, um, and they bury uh, nuts and um, acorns in the ground. They, this year, the uh, squirrel population appears to build up to high numbers in our, or at least around the houses. And um, uh, because we have a lot of mature trees, especially oaks. And um, one of the best things you could do is, or there's not much you could do actually for squirrels, because unless you have the tree isolated and don't have any tall trees above it, they're going to, um, they can usually get to the tree. But if you do like what they're most recommended for like birdhouses and put a um, metal uh, siding around the, aluminum siding around the uh, base of the tree up off the ground so the squirrels can uh, climb up the tree. Uh, that will deter, deter the squirrels. But if you're, uh, like most people, have the fruit trees near 
a large tree, they're just going to swoop down from the neighboring tree and get into the canopy of the apple tree. And the um, the uh, uh, you can make uh, one way you can do something is you can make the yard less attractive by removing bird on the market. I mean, you don't want to feed them or do anything else and remove all your nuts and everything if you can um, before they fall so they don't dig holes in the ground so they go somewhere else to find their food. And that's Right, but I'm not can to offer more encouragement than that. It's a problem that all of us have found. <laughs> oh, yeah. Squirrel, squirrels can be very problematic. I was just going to add a little bit. Um, squirrels have been a real problem for me. And in fact, that's part of the reason why I don't grow fruit trees. I used to try to grow fruit trees. And I tried several things. I, I tried netting. And some of the things from netting, it, it, I, I learned is that you have to cover the entire tree. You have to kind of tie it down at the bottom because they will come underneath. The other unfortunate thing sometimes... Um, it's the, it's the netting, the bird netting you get there, um, might the squirrels still might chew through that, or sometimes, unfortunately, snakes sometimes come through the trees, going after, and and they get caught in this netting, and, and so there's other things to consider. So, it 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 is it is frustrating, and squirrels are like, they're very much like individuals. And, You'll have a particular squirrel that is like essentially keyed on your tree, and it, it, it becomes a battle between the, the squirrel and yourself, and I uh, often find that I, I, I'm on the uh, losing, losing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I've moved on. <laughs> so I don't know if Taffy has anything else you, she would like to No, my only suggestion is get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> that would even help. <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't help. No. Yeah, I don't know. Squirrels are a, a real problem. Um, this is, doesn't address your fruit problem, but for pots, squirrels will dig in pots, mm -hmm. especially freshly planted pots with not nice soil. And I sprinkle my pots with pepper flakes, and that seems to deter them. Um, but that's not doesn't help your fruit problem. Yeah. So um, yeah, along the same lines, if you if you have squirrels, it's like what Taffy was saying. Sometimes the physical barrier or a, or a, a chemical barrier or something, a physical barrier, just even some gravel, just some gravel or a mesh screen, and still allows the bulbs of plants to go through it. But um, yeah, squirrel squirrels are tough. <laughs> so I think I, that was our last question, uh, Mary. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we had anybody typing into the comments section or not today, but hopefully in the future we'll have to type something into the comments section. As this is our first program, it's really our our first experiment and uh, trying this out. And um, what we hope to do is that um, because we do get questions come in and we're not able to answer them, we will try to answer them electronically. So if you do submit a question, please include your email address, and we'll try to get you. Um, information back to you as soon as possible. Please feel free to include a photo and add as much detail as you can about your problem or your, or your situation. And we look forward to you know, helping you out, being of service to you in the future. Um, <clears throat> but just to let you know, our next program is coming up on August 4th, and the following program will be on August 18th at noon. And I hope to uh, see and hear from more folks in the future. And I uh, look forward to being of service.